Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to my cat mat tutorial channel. Daniel's here and today I'm making my first video in statistics. And my topic, my first topic I would like to talk about is basic ideas of statistics, which consists of uh, five main points. Um, the first point is some basic concepts in statistics. The second point is sampling type data, design of experiment, and the last point is about bias of study. You know, at first I wanted to combine them all into only one video, but then I realized it might be time consuming and, and the video will be very long. It might take up to a few hours, so uh, it might be tiring for people to watch my video and also it makes me tired as well. So I have decided to uh, divide my video into smaller videos. Um, so today I would like to go over only the first two main points, which is basic concepts and sampling. Then the second video of topics one, I would like to talk about types of data. In the last video, I'm going to talk about design of experiments and bias of study. So first, basic concept in statistics. You want to learn statistics. So the first thing you need to know is what is statistics, right? So the definition of statistics is the study of procedures for collecting, describing, and drawing conclusion from information. And to understand this uh, concept better, I would like to go over an example. Suppose you wonder what is the average height of students in your college. Let's say your college uh, has like 10,000 10, students. So you cannot go and collect the height of all students from your college because it's very time consuming and it, it might cost so the best solution is you go and collect the information from a smaller group of students, let's say 100 students or 200 students from your college. And then you get uh, the information about their height, then you take the average to know what is the average of their height and make a draw estimation uh, to, and make an estimate of the average height of your college students. So that's how you make statistics. First, you go and collect data. Then use the data that you collected to calculate the average height of 100 students. And then from the average height of 100 students, you make conclusion and estimate for the average height of students in your college. So that's how you make statistics. And in this situation, your question of interest is what is the average height of students in your college? So the group of people that you are interested in is all students from your college. All students from your college. So that's what I call population. So that is the first concept, population. So population in this situation is all students from your college. And you collect the information from only 100 students. So the 100 students survey, the group of 100 students surveys is called a sample. And the information that you are interested in here is the average height, the average height. So the average height of student from your college here, I'm going to say parameter. I'm going to call it parameter. And when you collect the group of 100 students, you are interested in the average height of students in your course. So you go and, and calculate the average height of 100 students. So that number is I'm going to call statistics. Here you need to uh, keep in mind statistics here is different from statistics, statistics with S and statistics with no S. So a statistics with S is the name of the subject. And statistics here is uh, the name of a 
a number that represents for uh, an information from the symbol. So here I would like to go over some the definition of those um, concepts. First, a population is the entire collection of individuals about which information is sought. A symbol is basically a subset of population containing the individuals that you are actually observed. A statistic is a number that describes a symbol and a parameter is a number that describes a population. And the process that you collect data, the process of collecting data is what I call sampling. So that is the five basic concepts in the first topic. So when you deal with statistics, first you have to go and collect data. So the process of collecting data is called sampling. We have many, many methods to collect a symbol. For example, when you want to collect 100 students from your school, you can go and collect uh, randomly 100 students. Or you go and collect 100 students who are freshmen. Or you go collect 100 students from your uh, area, like from your circle, your classmate, your, your next door class uh, students. Or you also might collect a student, like 50 students from uh, math department, 50 students from computer science department, and put them together to have 100 uh, students. So in that situation, you have many, many ways to make up a symbol. So in the lesson today, I would like to go over the six basic sampling methods. The first one is uh, how to collect a symbol, random symbol. The second is symbol of convenience, tradify symbol, cluster symbol, systematic symbol, and the last one is voluntary free response symbol. So one by one, let's look at symbol random symbol first. So symbol random symbol, the idea of the symbol random symbol is just right at the name of it. Symbol random symbol. So you have to guarantee about randomness because say symbol random symbol. So this symbol guarantees randomness. And the idea is to think about a lottery game. So suppose that, uh, imagine that 10,000 lottery tickets are sold and five winners will be chosen. So what is the, fair, the fairest way to choose the winners? What is the fairest way to choose the winner? You know, when, the, when you play the lottery game, um, fairness is what we expect in the game, right? Fairness uh, is what we expect in the game. So that's, that means we expect randomness. Because if the five winners are chosen not randomly, the game is not fair. Like suppose um, five winners collecting only from female or only male groups is not fair. The game is not fair at all. So the best way to collect five winners that guarantees about randomness is put the 10,000 tickets in the drum, miss them thoroughly and then draw five withdraw five randomly tickets one by one like first you withdraw one and then you withdraw the second one the next one and the next one so that's how you make up a symbol random symbol so notice here this tickets is equally likely to be one of the five ticket drawn suppose 10,000 tickets label number from 1 to 10,000. So the probability that you get the ticket number 5 is the same as the probability that you get the ticket number 11. And the same as the probability that you get the tickets of number 63, for example. And one more thing. Is possible collection of 5 tickets is equally likely to be drawn. For example, the group of uh, 5 number like 5, 6, 8, uh, 100, 120, the probability of getting this symbol is the same, the same as the probability of getting another five numbers. 
So that is the property of symbol random symbol. So definition. A symbol random symbol of psi n is a symbol chosen by a method in which its collection of n population items is equally likely to make up the symbol just as in a lottery. So that's how we guarantee the randomness. So let's check your understanding. The first situation, a poster wants to estimate the proportion of voters in a certain town who are Democrats, you know, like we have two, um, uh, two type Democrats in, uh, um, I forgot the other name, so Democrats. So here the poster wants to estimate the proportion of the voters in a certain town who are Democrats, yeah, re re um, Republicans and uh, Democrats. So he goes to a large shopping mall and approaches people to ask whether they are Democrats. Is this symbol a random, uh, a symbol random symbol? So here, the way the poster collect the symbol is like he go to a large shopping mall and approaches and asks only people who go to the shopping mall. So this is not a symbol random symbol because the probability of people who go to the mall to be surveyed is one. And the probability of people who go to different places to be surveyed is zero. So in this case, the symbol cannot guarantee randomness. So the answer is no. The symbol consists of only people in town who visit the mall. Let's look at the second situation. A telephone company wants to estimate the proportion of customers who are satisfied with their service. They use a computer to generate a list of random phone numbers and call those people to ask them whether they are satisfied. Is this symbol a symbol random symbol? So here, this is how uh, the company collects the data. They use the computer to generate a list of random phone numbers. So here, like the probability of this number to be chosen will be the same. And then they use uh, the, the list of phone number generated, they call people to ask. Here, suppose that all people will, will pick up the phone and answer. In this case, it is a simple random symbol, right? Yes, because every group of N customer where N is the symbol size is equally likely to be chosen. So that is about simple random symbol. Now we go to the second type symbol, which is symbol of convenience. So the, the, the idea of symbol of convenience is very simple. Just make it convenient. Write the word. Write the name of the symbol. Symbol of convenience. So make it convenient. The reason why we use this symbol because sometimes it is very difficult or even impossible to draw a symbol that is truly random. Now let's look at um, an example. So for example, you are interested in the average GPA of students from your college. So for convenience, like if you want to get a simple random symbol, you have to use computer, uh, generate a list of like, let's say 100 students randomly from your college and then go and collect the GPA from these 100 students. But it's not easy for you to do that. So in this case, for convenience, instead of running a symbol, random symbol, you go to uh, collect, collect information from people who are around you, who are uh, in your circle, let's say your best friends, your classmates, your friends of friends, uh, collect their GPA and make up the same of 100 students. So in this case, there's one problem. If you surround yourself with only smart people, suppose your friends are all smart because you're smart, so you make friends with only smart people. So, in a, like, there's a case that they all have very high GPA. So in this case, even you make a sample of 100 students and take the average of these 100 students, the average of your 100 students in the, in the survey cannot be 
a good estimate for the average of student from your college because like you are making symbol of only smart people so you see that so uh, now let's look at another example a construction engineer has just received a shipment of a thousand concrete blocks it's weighing approximately 50 pounds the blocks have been delivered in a large pile the engineer wishes to investigate the crossing trend of the blocks by measuring the trends in a sample of 10 blocks so how does the engineer collect the symbol in this case it's very difficult we have two questions in this case it's very difficult to draw a symbol random symbol of the flux and the second thing is um, so in this case why is it difficult to draw a symbol random symbol of flux and how the engineer draws a symbol of convenience so let's look at the first question why it might be difficult to draw a symbol random symbol of flux to draw a symbol random uh, symbol of flux is required the uh, the engineer to remove blocks from the center and bottom of the, the piles which is very difficult like you have to remove the the uh, the blocks to collect uh, a symbol randomly so it's very difficult and it's very hard for the engineers so in this situation what the engineer do is like he make a symbol of only 10 blocks off the top like he take the 10 um, blocks on the top of the pile so in this case what he doing that like, he collect a symbol of convenience that means he make it convenient like for convenience he take 10 blocks on the top of the pile so in this situation uh, that is an uh, so that the uh, that is an example of symbol of convenience by definition a symbol of convenience is basically a symbol that is not drawn by a well-defined uh, random method. And the uh, disadvantages here is, is not only acceptable for example from the example of collecting GPA average. You see that if you surround yourself with only smart people, the data will not be acceptable because uh, that um, there is a difference a huge difference between the symbol and the population but if you look at the second example when the engineers um, make a symbol of uh, blocks from the pile it's reasonable that it's very hard for the engineer to get a symbol randomly so in this case we accept that symbol because it's reasonable so here, a symbol of convenience may be acceptable when it is reasonable to believe that there is no systematic difference between the symbol and the population. And a symbol of convenience is not acceptable when it is possible that there is a systematic difference between the symbol and the population. So that's about symbol of convenience. So if you compare between symbol of convenience and symbol uh, random uh, symbols symbol random symbol is better but how but in some cases it's not easy to be collected symbol of convenience might not be accepted but it's very convenient to to collect now we go to the next symbol which is a uh, tradify symbol so tradify symbol here that the idea is um, suppose you collecting um, um, opinions from people about uh, like let's say like uh, about uh, a certain type of food and you believe that women and, and men have different uh, opinions so in this case the way you, you you make a symbol have to guarantee one more aspect that is how to involve also the gender into the symbol so in this case, we need something called tradifies symbol. Let's say, uh, for example, look at this situation. A company has 10,000 employees 
of whom 800 are full-time and 200 are part-time. The company wants to survey 50 employees about their opinions regarding benefits. Attitude toward the benefits may differ considerably between full-time and part-time employees. So the solution here, first we think about simple random symbol. If a simple random symbol is drawn, it is possible that the symbol will contain only a few part-time employees and more um, full-time employees. But you know that the, the attitudes of part-time employees might be different from the full-time employees because full-time employees receive more benefits. So in this case, Symbol random symbol fails to answer the question of attitude towards the benefits. So in this case, we have to find another way that guarantee that we can collect the opinion from both groups, the group of full-time and the group of part-time. So in this case, the idea is using trader, using trader. And the best, the better solution for that example is like, we, we are going to use two trader. One trader would consist of all full-time employees and the other would consist of only part-time employees. And from each trader, uh, from each trader, we are going to uh, make a symbol random symbol. Let, let's say like from the group of full-time employees, you take a symbol of 50 uh, people. And from the group of part-time employees, you make a symbol, random symbol of 50 people and then put them together, you have a symbol of 100 employees. So in this case, your symbol will also guarantee that the symbol is random and also is, is guarantees about the opinions of two groups will be all collectors. So the methods guarantee that both full-time and part-time employees will be well represented. Represented. So that is the, the idea of tradify symbol using trader. The definition is the population is divided into groups. This group called a trader. So these group called trader. Where the members of each trader are similar in some way. Similar in some way, for example, like the group of uh, part-time. They are all part-time, so they are similar in one way. That is they work at the same type of employment, part-time. The group of full-time, all people are the same. They are all full-time, so that is one thing of similarity. Then a symbol, random symbol is drawn from each stratum. You see that, so uh, from, the, from the first stratum, which is the part-time employees, they make a random symbol, a symbol random symbol, like they put in the computer, draw 150 numbers, represent for 50 people from part-time uh, part employers. And also do the same for the second trade that, in, that is from the group of uh, all full-time employ employers. They use computer to generate a list of uh, random numbers from the second group. And then put them together to make up a symbol. So that's how we make a, a tradify symbol. The advantage here is tradify sampling is useful when traders differ from one to another. But the individuals within a trader tend to be alike. Tend to be alike. So that is about tradify symbol. Next, we will uh, go over cluster symbol. Before I start cluster symbol, I would like to um, mention one thing here. Many people are confused between cluster symbol and tradify symbol because it's also divided by group and and uh, blocks, but um, but they are different in how they make up the symbol. So cluster symbol. The idea is using clusters. Uh, let's look at this example. To estimate the employment, the unemployment rate in a county, a government agency draws a symbol random symbol of households in the county. Someone visits its household and asks how many adults live in the household and how many of them are unemployed. So in this situation, 
the agency will go to its households. You know that uh, in a county we have like maybe thousand households. So the investigator cannot go and collect a thousand households. They should go and collect some household. And its households, they will collect information of all member in that household. So in this case, the cluster are the groups of adults and is of the household. So its household is a cluster. And all the member in one cluster will be symbol. You see that? So this is a cluster symbol because a simple random symbol of cluster is selected and every individual in this selected cluster is part of the symbol. So here, you see that the cluster sampling and 25 sampling are a little bit different, but it might be hard to um, differentiate. So here, in both cluster sampling and 35 sampling, one thing in common is the population is divided into groups. But in 35 sampling, a simple random sample is chosen from its group. Usually the group will divide by level of education opinions. But in cluster sampling, a simple random symbol of groups will be chosen and every member in its group will be symbol. So that is the difference. And usually like cluster sampling is divided by location. So that is the difference between cluster sampling and tradified sampling. Now let's look at um, another symbol that is systematic symbol. So here, the idea of systematic symbol is basically to make it systematic. For example, you imagine walking alongside a line of people and choosing every third one that will produce a systematic symbol. So for example, you have many lines of people. It's like you collect only the third people the second line, also the third people, the third people, the third people, and put them all together, you have a symbol. It's called systematics because you make a systematics. So in the systematic symbol, the population items are order. So the order are requ required in systematic symbol. It is decided how frequently to symbol items. For example, one could symbol every third item, every fifth item, or every hundred items. For example, I'm a teacher. I go to my first class. I I take the list of the first ten student in um, the list, and then I go to the second uh, class. I collect only the first ten student from the student list, and then I go to another class. Also the same process, just like the same procedure. Just take the first ten student. So when I put them all together, I have a systematic symbol. Or suppose I take the best student in this class with the best student from the second class, with the best student from the third class, like suppose I have 20 section of math, this section I take one student with high score and put these 20 good uh, students together, I have a systematics uh, symbol. So uh, another symbol of a uh, systematic symbol is Let's say automobiles are coming off an assembly line. It is decided to draw a systematic symbol for a, det a detailed check of the steering systems. The starting point will be the third car. So uh, the investigator will uh, take the third car and every fifth car after that will be symbol. So he take the third car and then the eighth car. Then uh, the 13 cards and then so on. So in this case, we start with the third card, the cow, uh, they then count by fives to determine which card will be symbol. The symbol will consist of the card's number 3, 8, 13, 18, uh, 23, and so on. So that is about systematic symbol. Now we go to the last symbol, voluntary free response symbols. Voluntary free response symbol usually um, um, they use they are usually applied by media 
to try to engage the audience. And the basic idea is just make it optional and voluntary because, you know, when you collect the opinions, say, suppose you ask a student how they feel about a professor, usually the students are um, not mandatory to reply, not mandatory to respond. Some students will answer, some students will not answer, some students uh, like decide to ignore the question due to many issues. So in this case, the volunteer free response symbol, that means the symbol collectors when the, um, the individuals are free to choose whether they, they want to respond or not respond. And um, the, the symbol will not be fairly defined. Example, a news commentator will invite people to twist an opinion or a radio announcer will invite people to call the station to say that, to say what they think, what they think. So people who go to the, to the troubles to volunteers an opinion tend to have stronger opinion than a typical of, uh, than a, a typical of the population. Usually people going through some issue will tend to respond more than people who have no issue. So that's, that is the problem of voluntary free response symbol. And usually people with negative opinion are often more likely to volunteer their responses than those with positive opinions. So that is everything about uh, sampling. So I have go over six types of samplings. And now to make sure that you understand my uh, lesson uh, well, I would like to uh, do some check your understanding. So, determine the type of sampling in the following situation. The first situation, draw a symbol of eight animals by drawing a symbol random symbol of two animals from each group. What kind of symbol is this? What kind of symbol is this? Here, we draw a symbol of eight animals by drawing a symbol random symbol of two animals from each group. So basically like each group, you will collect randomly two animals. And then you from A group you make you're making up 16 uh, in the uh, like you make up a symbol of 16 individuals. So in this case this is a trade five because we have eight trader a uh, trader. Uh, and each trader we are going to make a symbol random symbol of uh, animals. So answer a trade five symbol. A trader is a group of symbol and each group, each group we collect two animal. That is the symbol random symbol from the group. So that is the first situation. The second, uh, and this will make up a symbol of certain animals. Now we go to the second situation. Draw a symbol random symbol of two groups of animals from the four groups and constructs a symbol of 20 animals by including all of the animals in the symbol groups. What kind of symbol is this? What kind of symbol is this? So here, we draw a symbol random symbol of group, not individuals. And then from each group, we collect all of the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, animals from that group. So this is an example of cluster. So you see the cluster is different from the tradify. Here we're not making symbol random symbol of animals, but we make a symbol random symbol of the group of the group. So this is an example of cluster symbol. And each group is a cluster. Situation three a college faculty consists of 400 men and 250 men, uh, 50 women. The college administrator uh, wants to draw a symbol of 65 faculty members to ask their opinion about a new parking fee. They draw a symbol random symbol of 40 men and another symbol random symbol of 25 women. So you see here the situation is the opinion about new parking fee might be different between two group men and women. So they have two traders here. One trader is the men and one trader is the group of women. 
From each group, they make a symbol, random symbol of items. So this is an example of tradify, tradify symbol. So opinions might be different from two groups, men and women. Two groups are the two trader. The next situation. A retailer symbol 25 receipts from the past week by numbering of the receipts, generating 25 numbers, uh, random numbers, and sampling the receipt that correspond to these numbers. So this is an example of symbol random number because they use the computer to generate uh, 25 random numbers. And from 25 numbers, they collect the symbol of 25 receipts. Next situation, situation 5, a poster obtains a list of all the residential addresses in a certain town and use a computer random number generator to choose 150 of them. You see, use a computer random number generator to choose 150 of them. The poster visits each of the 150 households and interviews all the adults in each household about their television new habits. So here, like, they generate, they make a symbol, random symbol of the households, and each households, they will collect all the adults in that households. So this is an example of a cluster that they collect the symbol, random symbol of cluster first, 150 cluster, and then each cluster, anyone in that household will be collected. So this is a cluster symbol. There are 150 cluster. This cluster consists of all family members in that household. Uh, situation 5. All of the customer who enter a store on a particular day was given a survey to fill out concerning their opinions of the service at the store. So this is a symbol of convenience because like you uh, all the customer who enter a store, you, you collect opinion from uh, only people who go to the store. So it's very convenient. It cannot guarantee uh, randomness. And um, this is not a free respond um, symbol because the question doesn't give any information of whether the customer answer or not answer. So this is a symbol of convenience. Situation six. Every third day, a computer network, a computer network administrator analyzes the company's network logs to check for size of computer virus. So that means every third day, every third day, they will do it. So it's systematic because we have the order. Like every third day, the computer will process that procedure. So this is a systematic symbol. All right, so I think that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, don't forget to follow my next video. Uh, next Friday, I will be talking about some type data. What is the difference of, uh, between uh, different types of variables, different type data, how to um, uh, um, define uh, qualitative, quantitative data, uh, nominal um just like some type data. So thank you so much for watching and I'll hope to see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.